apparently there is a change in, in the conference schedule here. The uh, conference is going apparently to end a little bit earlier than originally planned. The session 12 was apparently cancelled and two of the papers were shifted to the other two sessions uh, uh, in the morning. So the afternoon session is basically gone. Two pa uh, papers got moved in here, two papers got moved in there, and the 12th session was cancelled. Sorry, there was one paper moved in each of the sessions and two of the papers here are cancelled. But it's also out on the walls everywhere you can see it. Um, we have the same amount of time for uh, this session here, but we have uh, seven presenters instead of six, so it's 13 minutes per, per paper here, and you know the story already. Three minutes ahead, you get the three minute sign, and one minute ahead. When I'm standing up, it's about to uh, wrap up and finish up. Yep. Then I would uh, like to, uh, to welcome David Kubanik as uh, the first speaker from Poland, presenting his paper. Oh, sorry, from Czech Republic. Oh, it's cool. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. So, I will start the correct one according to the program. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm David Kubanek from Brno University of Technology. And I'd like to present you our paper called Evaluation of uh, Fractional Order Approximated Butterworth High Pass and Bandpass Filter Transfer Functions. So, uh, the co authors of this uh, contribution are Jaroslav Poton and Norbert Harenchar from the same univers university, but the University of Technology, Czech Republic, and uh, Todd Freeborn from uh, University of Alabama, uh, USA. Uh, this paper deals with uh, fractional order uh, frequency filters, analog filters, so it's circuit theory, and uh, as you everybody know, uh, the fractional calculus is also used in uh, design of uh, analog filters, and uh, this paper evaluates how uh, frequency uh, characteristics look like uh, when uh, coefficients obtained for low pass are used in high pass and band pass filters. You will see. So, now a short introduction. As I told you, uh, fractional order filters have some advantages compared to the classic uh, integer order filters. They have uh, uh, some more general, general and flexible characteristics. Uh, you can see here example, magnitude frequency characteristic of filter, low pass filter with order 1.2, 1.5 and 1.6, uh, 1.8. Uh, the slope of the characteristic is dependent on this order. So you can set this slope in the stop band by changing the order of the filter. Uh, now something about fractional order low pass transfer functions. Uh, I aim at uh, the order between uh, order between one and two, and it consists of the integer order one and uh, alpha that is fractional component. So the fractional order low pass transfer function can look like this or like this. You can see there uh, Laplacian coefficient s and uh, some constant coefficients k. These constants uh, or coefficients uh, are determined based on the desired frequency characteristic, for example, of the filter. Uh, you can design these coefficients uh, depending on cutoff frequency, passband gain, passband ripple, various approximations of the filter, Butterworth, Chebyshev, and so on. So these are constants. Uh, for example, for uh, low pass Butterworth uh, frequency characteristic, you can compute this constant according to these relations. It's dependent on alpha. Two of them are constant. It's one exactly. So these coefficients are found uh, by mathematical methods, numerical methods to be uh, the characteristic as close as possible to the first order Butterworth function. Uh, this 
uh, these uh, low pass coefficients are computed are known but how about high pass and one pass transfer functions uh, they look very very similar I will show you on the next slide but uh, the coefficients are not yet known and the de designers of uh, fractional order filters often use the same coefficients obtained for low pass transfer functions and this paper uh, aims to analyze of uh, this uh, high pass and one pass characteristic, how do they differ from the desired uh, shape? There are uh, two, uh, three uh, cases of uh, high pass transfer functions that are analyzed in my paper. Here is the first case that is a simple multiplication of low pass filter low pass transfer function by s to the power 1 plus alpha here are uh, here is some modification additional gain correction by these two coefficients to get the same uh, the same pass band gain as in low pass transfer functions and the last one uh, transformation from low pass is the classic substitution of s by uh, 1 over s. So these are uh, in a total six high pass transfer functions that can be labeled as S 1a, 1b, 2a, 2b and so on and I will show you how they look like in frequency domain. If we, if we uh, draw magnitude versus frequency uh, characteristics. So uh, here we are, the transfer functions 1a, 1, uh, 2a, 3a look like this. You can see they differ from each other and the specimen or the desired transfer function is here by dotted line. So this is the characteristic that we should be uh, as close as possible. But you can see the black, black line, for example, has the largest error. So uh, the result here is that the green one, the 3a fun function, has uh, the lowest error, positive, both positive and negative, from the desired characteristic. The b variants of the high pass function have even uh, larger error, especially the black and blue one. They differ maybe more than two decibel, and the green one again the uh, the third uh, function has reasonable error from the first order Butterworth function. So the uh, conclusion here is that uh, it is uh, reasonable or advisable to use the transformation. I will get back or substitution as substituted by 1 over s. So this is the best solution to transfer a low pass to high pass in fractional order and uh, using the same coefficients obtained for low pass. Of course, because this is also known for integer order filters and this, uh, this transformation works. But uh, a more complicated uh, situation is at uh, bypass, uh, band pass transfer functions. Here I have two cases. The first one is obtained by simple multiplication of low pass by S. So it appears here in uh, numerator. And second one is multiplication by uh, S uh, to the power alpha. It's here. Again, two variants A and B because of two initial variants of low pass. And the coefficients from the low pass are again used here. Uh, the interesting future of, uh, feature of uh, band pass transfer functions here is that they have asymmetric uh, stop band slopes. You will see it on graphical uh, results. It has attenuations uh, 20 decibel per decade below center frequency and minus 20 alpha uh, dB per decade above center frequency 
and this second case is vice versa. So uh, fractional order bandpass filters are able to control, uh, in this case, one of the stop band uh, slopes of the magnitude frequency characteristic. And here are the uh, numerical results or graphical results. Uh, again, the variants or cases of uh, bandpass functions 1a, 1b, 2a and 2b. And the gray color is the second order bandpass filter, classic integer order filter. And the error was evaluated in this band where the slope is the same in this figure in the right stop band, in the upper stop band. And you can see that the characteristics differ from each other. Again, uh, similarly to the high pass case. Uh, here, for example, the 1A version has highest higher peak. Here is the peak lower. And also the peak frequency changes. Here also, uh, the black characteristic is much uh, lower, or the difference is uh, relatively high, maybe 3, 5 decibel. And uh, that's why uh, some of the variants of transfer functions for band pass are uh, less suitable for utilization with uh, low pass coefficients. Okay, the conclusions is only repeating uh, of my speech, so only shortly. I have uh, introduced uh, some possibilities of transfer transformation of fractional order transfer function from low pass to high pass and from low pass to band pass. And uh, the graphical results uh, showed us how these transfer functions uh, change or how this uh, characteristic change with uh, using uh, low pass uh, filter coefficient. Uh, some uh, future works should uh, investigate uh, finding new coefficients of uh, fractional order filter for low pass and band pass transfer functions because as you uh, as you can see uh, here are uh, <coughs> relatively high differences and the designers uh, don't know uh, in advance how it will look like. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, my question would be if uh, the scene transformations uh, can be applied, for example, to Chebyshev high filters, which we give for speaker uh, fast band. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think so. This transformation can be done because the actually the form of the low pass, for example, Chebyshev. Oh, it's not the same. Chebyshev has uh, zero in transfer characteristics, uh, as far as I know. But uh, uh, I have here some uh, remark that, uh, yes, uh, Chebyshev uh, was, uh, or, or the coefficients were determined for Chebyshev approximation already, only for low pass. And uh, I think uh, some case of this transformation would be used also for Chebyshev, inverse Chebyshev, cover, other approximation. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have to move on to, to the next speaker, so if there are further questions, maybe take them uh, in, in the, for the dinner tonight. Our next speaker is Halit uh, Sindar from uh, Turkey. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Hal Şemberber from Erciyes University in Turkey. Uh, this is title of the, our uh, study, Artificial Big Colony Algorithm Based System Modeling for Tuning Diffractional Order PID Controllers. 
This is outline of the uh, presentation. First one, uh, introduction. I will give some information about uh, our study and uh, profit design problem algorithms used in this study, experimental results, and conclusion. This study consists of two uh, main parts. Uh, the first part is uh, fractional and integer order model uh, structure with time delay uh, for integer order systems. And uh, we used uh, two algorithms, artificial big colony and differential evaluation algorithm uh, in this part. And uh, second part, is a fractional order PID controller design uh, based on the used new models uh, obtained with uh, help uh, MATLAB program. Uh, for modeling uh, process, uh, we prefer uh, the integrated square error uh, for modeling process and uh, for second part, uh, controller for controller design, uh, we uh, prefer for uh, different performance indicates uh, integrate integrated square error, uh, integral time uh, weighted absolute error, integral absolute error, and uh, integral uh, time square error. Learning of the internal structure that uh, characterizes the system uh, by using experimental or mathematic data uh, is called as uh, system modeling. And uh, the main purpose of the system modeling is to reflect the characteristic of the system using lower order uh, process in general. Uh, this is uh, basic block diagram for the system modeling. Uh, UN is reference input and uh, YN is output. EN is uh, our uh, error uh, value and uh, plant. We use uh, two different uh, model structures uh, for uh, this study and algorithm. We use two different algorithm. And uh, in recent years, the usage of the proportional integral derivative controllers having the notion of the fractional order, fractional calculus, uh, popularly called as fractional order control, uh, has an increasingly importance in control engineering. Fractional calculus is known uh, nearly uh, 300 years, but uh, the idea of the uh, fractional order PID controller is uh, firstly proposed by Paul Debney. And uh, this is uh, this figure is fractional PID controller plane, uh, and uh, this is uh, transfer function of the fractional order controller. Uh, unlike the classical PID controller, we have two additional parameters. Uh, one of them is lambda and the other one is mu. Uh, when lambda and mu uh, equal one, this is uh, classical PID controller. Uh, and lambda is one and mu is zero. This is PI controller and mu is one and lambda is uh, zero. This is uh, P D controller. Artificial B colony algorithm uh, that imitates the foreign behaviors of the honey bee colony uh, was suggested by uh, Karaboa. Uh, colony. The colony is consists of uh, three different types uh, bees. Uh, Scout bees, onlooker, and employed bees. Uh, nectar amount is uh, discovered by scout bees and uh, employed bees bringing the food to him and 
it gives some information about the uh, nectar amount via information dense and onlooker bees choose the search uh, according to uh, information dense. Differential evaluation algorithm uh, is a population based hysteric optimization technique developed by uh, Price and Stone in 1995. Uh, which is based on genetic algorithms in terms of operations, uh, mutation, crossover, evolution, and selection. This is uh, our experimental results. Uh, firstly, this is system modeling. We have uh, two uh, model structures. Uh, first one is integer order model structure and second one is uh, fractional order uh, model structure. Uh, we have two additional parameters. Uh, integer order model structure has five parameters and uh, fractional order has uh, seven parameters and uh, two uh, integer order systems uh, used in this study for uh, modeling process. Uh, this is the result of the system modeling uh, parts uh, integrated square error uh, considering the results. Uh, we can say, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we can say a uh, fractional order model structure has better results uh, according to integer order model structure. Uh, also, uh, both algorithms has a similar performance uh, in terms of the integra integrated square error. Uh, and this is uh, for uh, G1 uh, step response A and B e and uh, C is error reduction curves. Uh, figure 2A uh, is integer order step response and figure 2B is uh, fractional order uh, model step response. Uh, we can say uh, actual and uh, fractional order uh, model structure outputs uh, almost identical to each other. Uh, this is the difference of the integer order and fractional order. Uh, also, artificial bee colony is uh, more successful results uh, in terms of error reduction speed according to uh, differential evaluation algorithm. And this is uh, also step response for uh, G2 process and uh, error reduction curves. Uh, we can say it's similar, uh, it has similar results to uh, other uh, structure, uh, but artificial the colony algorithms error reduction speed is more successful uh, differential evaluation algorithm. This is the second part of the R study uh, controller design part uh, for uh, A and B for G1 process step response uh, GMF and uh, C and D. Uh, GMI uh, integer order model structure. Uh, we can say uh, overshot uh, amount and uh, rising time and septic time uh, is very uh, lowest uh, in uh, artificial bee colony algorithm uh, according to differential evaluation algorithm. Also, uh, fractional order uh, 
controller design fractional order PID controller has better results uh, integer order controller. Uh, it's similar results uh, to G1. Uh, this is G G2 process, and the, I think the results is similar than uh, similar to uh, G1 process. Conclusion, the fractional order model structure uh, proposed for high order and oscillator systems have achieved successful results. Also, integer order uh, model structure is satisfactory, but uh, it uh, is not as well as uh, fractional order model structure. The perform, uh, performance of the artificial B and differential evaluation based models in control design is not far from each other. Uh, maybe uh, artificial B is a little uh, better than the other algorithm and closed loop response of the systems having fractional model based for pocket controllers are uh, more desirable than the other systems using integer models. Thank you for attending and listening. Thank you again for presenting. Uh, we have time for one question. Nobody in the audience? Well, I got a little curious about you. you. You compared the ABC algorithm and the DE algorithm in the yeah. beginning against the PID. Yeah. Um, but when you when you presented your your error results and and you quantified your results, you're not comparing against the PID anymore. Do you have any idea of how how much different the ABC and the DE would be compared to the PID? Uh, classical PID or classical PID? PID. You choose. Uh, I think. Uh, the result is uh, artificial B and differential evolution is uh, very closely. Uh, maybe differential evolution uh, competition time of the differential evolution is better than artificial B colony. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you very much. So our our next speaker is from uh, Czech Republic again, um, uh, Lukas Langhammer, please. Scene is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I've already been introduced, so now allow me to introduce the results of my research. Uh, dealing with uh, fully differential multifunctional uh, fractional order filter. Uh, let us start with a bit of theory. There are two basic ways uh, how to propose fractional order filters. The first one is using so-called fractional order elements, but because of the lack of implementation of these elements, uh, they are usually replaced by uh, RC ladder networks. The other approach, uh, which is the one I use, is approximation of the Laplacian operator of uh, fractional order uh, by the function of higher order. So, uh, what we are uh, focusing in case of our research, uh, the fractional order filters, they are usually uh, providing only one function. If they provide more functions than one, it uh, usually uh, requires some modification of the structure or uh, change the value of uh, passive uh, uh, param uh, passive uh, parts and so on. And uh, only a work which deals with fractional order filter which provides more functions from the same structure. Uh, the only work I've been able to find is uh, this reference specified down below. So we've seen some uh, gap in the research and decided to go this way. Since the, uh, our proposal is uh, fully differential, I would like to also mention the uh, advantages of fully differential structures in comparison to single-ended structures, which is the greater attenuation of common mode signals, greater dynamic range, a lower harmonic distortion and better uh, power supply rejection ratio. 
on this slide we have some basic information about the proposal itself. It's uh, one plus alpha uh, fractional order filter, which can provide low pass transfer function, band pass function, high pass function, and uh, band stop function. It's based on uh, inverse order reader feedback third order topology, uh, which used to approximate uh, one plus alpha fractional order filter. Uh, we decided to use uh, recently uh, presented uh, approximation, uh, which allows to uh, control the quality factor of uh, resulting uh, fractional order function. And uh, the uh, fully differential structure has been uh, created from its single-ended uh, counterpart by mirroring passive elements around the horizontal plane of the filter. So, uh, thanks to its specific uh, structure, our filter uh, provides electronic connectionless reconfiguration of the resulting transfer function between the functions I've already mentioned, and it also provides electronic control of its order, its pole frequency, and the quality factor. Uh, simulation results were carried out using uh, transistor level models based on CMOS TSMC uh, 0 0.18 micrometers technology. Uh, on this slide we have uh, the active elements which were used in the proposal itself. It's a balanced output transcript transcriptance amplifier, adjustable current amplifier and fully uh, differential current follower. You can see here their uh, schematic symbols and uh, relation describing the behavior of these elements. Now we are finally getting uh, to the proposal itself. Uh, this is the proposed structure consisting of two fully differential current followers, uh, four adjustable current amplifiers and three balanced output transconductance amplifiers. And uh, down here you can see the transfer function of this structure <coughs> and as I said uh, the filter provides a uh, reconnectionless reconfiguration of its transfer function depending on the setting of uh, values of uh, parameters of electronically controllable active elements so depending on the setting of transconductances GM1 to GM3 and current gains B1 to B4 uh, we can obtain the desired function. So in the table you can see how we have to set these parameters to obtain the function. In case of the electronic control of the order of the filter, it's presented here in case of a uh, low pass function for three different values of uh, alpha parameter 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. And again, from the table down here, you can see how we have to set uh, the parameters of uh, electronically controllable active elements uh, in order to obtain the desired order of the function. For the electronic control of pole frequency, it has been again tested for three different values of uh, pole frequency for 15 kHz, 100 kHz and 150 kHz. When the order of the filter was set to 1.9 and the quality factor was 0 0.707. So in case of the pole frequency control, uh, we have to change the values of transcriptances GM1 to GM3, uh, the values of uh, current gains remain the same for all frequencies. And finally, uh, the electronic control of the quality factor of the filter uh, is presented in case of the high pass transfer function in this specific case uh, for values of 0 0.707, 1.41 and 2.12 when the pole frequency was again 100 kilohertz and the order of the filter was set to 1.5 and the table again specifies the specific values we need to set to obtain the desired quality factor of resulting fractional order function. Uh, here I have some uh, comparison of 
our solution with other works. So, like I said, uh, as far as I know, there's only one other solution which provides multiple function from the same structure without necessity to uh, modify the structure or uh, change the uh, passive parts because we need some other values and only our solution provide uh, all three con electronic controllabilities so controllability of uh, the order, controllability of the uh, pole frequency and controllability of the quality factor of the uh, resulting fractional order function. So in the conclusion I've decided uh, to uh, specify the values we obtained and uh, compare them with the theoretical expectations. So in case of the uh, tested orders which we expect the theoretical orders 1.5, 1 uh, 1.3, 1.5 and 1.7, we obtain values uh, 1.35, 1.46 and 1.64. For the port frequencies, the theoretical frequencies were 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, and 150 kilohertz. And uh, simulation yield 55.3 kilohertz, 109.7 kilohertz, and 161.5 kilohertz. And for the quality factors, with the theoretical expectations 0 0.7, 0 0.7, uh, 1.41, and 2. 0.12, we obtained uh, quality factors of 0 0.66, 1.27, and 1.86. Uh, so I dare to say the obtained results are in good agreement with the theoretical expectation. And we were able to verify the electronic uh, reconnectionless uh, reconfiguration of the filter between the function uh, functions I've already mentioned and uh, also we were able to uh, verify all three electronic controllabilities of the order of the pole frequency of the quality factor. So uh, at the end I have set up some possible future steps. It would be some uh, further analysis of the proposed uh, structure. Uh, then can be implementation of the structure in order to carry out experimental results and uh, we are getting to the end well, that concludes uh, my presentation uh, I would like to firstly thank to uh, ITC conference cost which provided uh, the funds uh, for the research I've just presented and uh, I would like to thank you for your attention Thank you very much for your presentation, Lucas. Are there any uh, questions from the audience? Yes, please go ahead. How did you determine the uh, quality factor in the simulated uh, characteristics? Yeah, so uh, it was uh, tested in case of the uh, high pass transfer fracture, as so seen here. So, uh, I I am afraid I won't be uh, able to give from the head uh, the exact relation for it, but uh, it's based on the overpeaking uh, at the uh, port frequency, and mm -hmm. uh, we calculated from uh, the overpeaking. Mm -hmm. From classic methods. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Half a minute left. Nope. I would like to ask you, thank you very much for interesting work and also interest in simulations and hardware impl implementation or, or indication of hardware implementation. Now, your your circuit has a lot of functionality. You can choose the, the, the filter, uh, you can choose the Q-factor, you can choose the quantum frequency in one design. Yes. So how does that compare to the other solutions with respect to power consumption and, and uh, necessary chip area? Do you have any indication? Well, uh, since the st I would start with the fact the structure is fully differential, so fully differential structures uh, are usually a bit more complex in comparison to single ended structures, so they would take uh, more place on the chip. 
and uh, well, technically we have it's not that much uh, more complex because we need probably just a doubled number of the outputs so each output is like two transistors uh, I would guess it would be it would take more place in case that we have six uh, capacitors or instead of three capacitors in if we would use the uh, single ended structure so in, okay. yeah, so in case of the power consumption uh, well we are using uh, we are using discrete chips for the implementation so the power consumption would be quite high uh, I'm not exactly sure how much it would be in case it would be all uh, one IC chip yeah. but I guess I don't know maybe 100 milliampers mm. yep. Absolutely. thank you very much <laughs> that brings us to our next presenter number four in the row so we are about halfway um, Dorota Mosierska Please go ahead. Uh, my name is Dorota Mozewska. My work is done together with my colleague uh, Małgorzata Zwerwas from the same Faculty of Computer Science of Bielostok University of Technology. We are working in bigger project about PID controllers, uh, fractional but variable order. I am here also because I know about this conference only from the meeting of cost action. Uh, so this is not financed by cost, but uh, due to the cost I am here. So I'm going to say some more uh, mathematical words rather about systems with fractional variable order and difference operator and special convolution type because uh, with convolution type I can use uh, Z-transform easily and find solution and find some conditions on stability of systems with such an order. Uh, first about some basic definition, this is about oblivion function. Uh, for people that maybe know something about this version of fractional calculus, this oblivion function usually is written here with constant order. So here this new, this is mm, the function order that could change, evolve with mm, some steps and uh, we can write definition like that but uh, usually we adopt in calculation with recurrence definition with step zero with k equals zero and uh, uh, evolving according to the previous values of k minus, k minus one and about greenwald letnikov backward difference so gl means greenwald letnikov in some shortcut uh, we think this it's more or less like classical version, but here we put this order function with dot means that we use a function and we change its in its values in oblivion function. H is step. Uh, in the next slide, I will show the proposal of definition for a differential situation when H is tending to zero. And this is a convolution type because here I have a shift, this, sorry about that, this kh minus ih. So this is a uh, difference of function x. It could be vector function or scalar function, doesn't matter, because this is a scalar values of oblivion function. Uh, for differences, sometimes for discrete systems, h could be mm, mm, just taken as equal 1, and we use then the same definition. Uh, so proposal of differential operator of such greenwald letnikov variable fractional order type it's just to use the previous one at t t is then real number and with limit uh, for h tending to zero it's just proposal of that so about stability we try to say anything about such type of system 
So the, with this fractional variable order on the left side operator, on the right side we have here matrix A. So uh, this matrix is n, uh, n by n. And uh, this, this is with the shift k h minus h. So uh, just it help us to find recurrence, so recurrence solution. So we can solve it just step by step. But it doesn't help us, this recurrence solution, to see condition for stability or instability. So first thing mm, we can easily say when the system is unstable. Uh, if eigenvalues of matrix A or let us say too big or just uh, absolute value of lambda is greater than some number where those numbers a lambda, B lambda are mm, produced by infinite series, but uh, just coefficient of this series are here multiplied by uh, oblivion factors. They're really fast tending to zero. Here, phi lambda, phi lambda, this is argument of uh, eigenvalue lambda. So this is like from this, yes, from taken from this. So to check this, we easily can cut this series to some step because of these values are really fast tending to zero. This is condition for instability. For stability, uh, more or less, we can see that, but again, this z transverse form of special obli of oblivion function. So let us think about a complex function like that. And uh, when now eigenvalues of matrix A from our system is from the set, complex set, so region on complex plane, Z multiplied by a Z, but this is for modulus Z less than one, then, then our system is asymptotically stable. So we can draw, for example, some regions about that, and this is going to be presented together with example, but from this example I use the matrix, simple matrix like that, with uh, eigenvalues, two eigenvalues, they're complex, and then I will put in drawings, in plots, uh, uh, with some crosses inside, to draw uh, those regions of stability, so what does mean region of stability, that we should be just inside this region, but I use here, for example, a specific order function, this new one function. Order function, it's tending to one with k tending uh, to infinity. Uh, but this is variable order function. And I choose his, uh, here this coefficient, this coefficient in exponential from 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 6. So the, uh, this, this uh, just constant line, not dot, this is for 0, 1. This like this smaller, uh, but a little shifted to the left. It's uh, for a this coefficient a equals zero six. So it means that we are faster tending to one. So it's almost like in one, but it's, it's not exactly one. But it's more similar just to <coughs> unit cycle, just to unit cycle. And now we have a uh, asymptotic stability for our system from example because uh, then for h equals 0, 1, for example, uh, we have eigenvalues inside all regions like that. And now we would have such a situation that I change order function, this decreasing order function to 0, but with the same coefficients uh, for exponential. And now uh, eigenvalues of matrix A from from example, it's only inside one region, from the region A equals 0, 6, but it's outside the regions for A plus 0, 1 and A equals 0, 3. So only uh, for situation A equals 0, 6, um, we would have uh, a stability, asymptotic stability for the previous two system is um, unstable. So it depends how fast this function is tending to zero in this situation. And I also use uh, in our this investigation checking different order functions. Of course, 
I can use any order function, like uh, any uh, discrete function or just discrete discretized um, function or any values, but it would be interesting just to check, for example, sign, modulus of sign, also with some coefficient a, but here a is 1, 3, 6, not 0, uh, 1, uh, like previously, with step h equals 0, 1. And now uh, we don't have stability for a equals 1, so for the order equals uh, modulus of sine k. But we have a stable system for order functions like sine 3k and sine 6k. Uh, about fractional variable equation, it means that I change from matrix A to constant lambda, to constant lambda. We can write also a uh, recurrence solution for such an equation. And here in proposition, we put just the limits for lambda from left and right to have this equation asymptotically stable about conclusions. So we try to investigate stability of the green Vatletnik of type linear fractional variable order discrete time systems with some step H. But we use convolution type of operators because it allows us to use the transfer method. And we determine the regions of um, locations of eigenvalues of matrices associated to the systems in order to prove and just to observe when systems are asymptotically stable. And about some references, uh, there are more some, for us it's important this paper that we investigate some Z-transform for fractional difference operator. And uh, we put some more things about variable fractional order uh, at the paper with Professor Ostalczyk, uh, but there exist more definitions uh, of discrete fractional order differences. They're, for example, from Sierociuk and Zielinski from Poland, or Valerio and Costa from France. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much to Artur for presenting. Are there any questions? No. Could you please go back to the instability criterion slide, pretty much in the beginning? No. Yeah, that one. I got a little confused about the A uh, lambda and the, the B lambda coefficients. They appear to be the same to me. Uh, oh, maybe sorry. just a copy should paste, be but it should be a it sign, should be sign, right? sign. It should sorry, be sorry, I wrote cosine. It should be sign, orthogonal. Sign, sign, yeah. sign, for sure, right. sorry, sorry. That this is my mistake, yes, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'll copy and paste. Yes, yeah, copy and paste about that, sorry. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much again. Thank you. Then uh, we move back to, uh, to David, or well, we move forward to, to moving back to David. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kumarnik uh, from uh, Czech Republic again. Please go ahead with your second paper. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you once more. Uh, again, fractional order filters, so hopefully it will not be boring. Uh, it is a little bit uh, other than uh, of uh, Lukash, but uh, it's very similar. So uh, the title is Multifunctional, Electronically Reconfigurable and Tunable Fractional, fractional Order Filter. Uh, the main author is uh, Jan Bořák from uh, Brno University of Technology and uh, other co-authors are also, also from the same workplace. Uh, introduction may be probably skipped. Here is Again, something about uh, differences between integer order filters, fractional order filters, that the slope can be uh, set uh, uh, s in stepless way, fluently can be set. And uh, uh, at the bottom, three design methods that can be used for uh, fractional order design in uh, analog domain can be set. Uh, Lukáš told uh, us two methods. I have here three methods 
one of the Lukash methods is uh, divided here into two methods. The first uh, method is utilization of element, passive element uh, with fractional order impedance, usually fractional order capacitor. It means that this element is uh, readily available, it means on the market, but it's not true currently. This fractional order impedance cannot be obtained so uh, simply, uh, only in experimental stage can be said. Uh, but uh, we can approximate this element by fractional, uh, by uh, resistive capacitive uh, elements or sub-circuits. I will show you because this method uh, is the one that we uh, choose for this design. And the last method is approximation of the whole fractional order filter transfer function by integer order function of higher order. For example, 1.5 order is approximated uh, by uh, third order. So here is uh, something about the design of the fractional order element. Uh, as I told you, this uh, fractional order element is replaced by integer order circuit that, is, that consists of uh, resistances and capacitances and uh, it's more or less equal to the fractional order impedance of capacity character, capacitive character with uh, pseudo capacitance C alpha and order alpha that is between uh, 0 and 1. This structure is called Foster 1, but we have uh, or we can use also uh, other structures, Foster 2, that differs from this one uh, uh, by uh, that, that these uh, RC blocks are not uh, in parallel but in series. And we have also other uh, structures very similar to this one that approximate the behavior of uh, fractional order uh, capacitor. Uh, as an example, we have chosen the values of alpha of the fractional order of this capacitor 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. And uh, we have designed this structure by numerical method such that it has capacitance C alpha uh, is valid uh, for the uh, frequency F0 and in some band around this frequency. Okay, so in this way we uh, prepared the fractional order element. Uh, this slide introduces uh, the active elements that we used in the fractional order filter design. Uh, it's very similar to the elements that uh, Lukash uh, introduced already. So again, adju adjustable current amplifier, AKA, uh, with current gain B, input current, output current and relation between these two currents. Second uh, active elements, the element that we used is uh, balanced output transconductance amplifier with uh, transconductance GM and the relations between input and output uh, voltages and currents. So here is the final uh, topology of the resulting filter. You can see here this active element that I introduced and passive, some passive uh, element. Here is classic capacitor and here uh, are three fractional order capacitors with the orders that I mentioned. Here is a switch so this filter can have a variable order simply by switching. Uh, these uh, capacitors with, with different order. Here is an input. Uh, the filter works in current mode, so the, the input is current and here is output also current. Uh, the transconductances of these two OTAs 
can be controlled electronically. It's controlled usually by auxiliary, auxiliary current. So here these red arrows mean that here can be control signal that controls uh, pole frequency of the filter. And also the quality factor of the filter can be controlled by uh, varying this coefficient uh, BQ. Also it can be done uh, electronically, but uh, the internal structure of these blocks is out of the scope, but uh, they are uh, available and uh, they are already designed and can be found in literature. Uh, now something about the output. Uh, actually here we have three outputs of the filter and these three outputs are multiplied by transfer coefficients B1, B2 and B3 and uh, the sum of these three currents is the resulting output current. It can be seen also in the transfer function of this structure. The coefficients B are here in numerator and for example if we choose B1 for example 1 we obtain this uh, this term in num uh, in a numerator and if these other coefficients B are 0 we obtain low pass filter of fractional order 1 plus alpha uh, if we write the general transfer function of uh, low pass fractional or the filter, uh, we have here again the coefficients that can be determined for a desired frequency characteristic, for example, Butterworth. Uh, we can compute these uh, coefficients. We can choose uh, omega zero pole frequency. This is the same only angular and uh, thus we can have all these coefficients in this general transfer function and by, com by comparing these coefficients uh, with uh, the second transfer function of this structure we can compute element parameters so here are as an example the design parameters of uh, for uh, transconductances GM1, GM1 and GM, GM2. As you can see, uh, these transconductances that can be used for controlling omega zero. Yes, they are dependent on it. So let's go on. Uh, here are summarized the properties of the design filter. Uh, the filter can be tuned. Its frequency. Uh, its pole frequency can be, can be tuned by changing the transconductances. Quality factor can be set by the cur current gain BQ of the current amplifier and also the responses, low pass, high pass, band pass and band reject can be uh, chosen by switching the current gains B1, B2 and B3 according to the following table. Yes, low pass filter, high pass and so on and here are the values of these coefficients. So this filter was uh, simulated and measured uh, practically. It was constructed on printed circuit board. Uh, the elements wa were uh, implemented by universal current conveyors and digitally adjust adjustable current amplifiers that are available at our work workplace as prototype chips and uh, ACA elements by integrated circuits EL2082 and uh, these are the resulting uh, measurement and uh, simulation characteristics in colors are measurement results and uh, black in, in dashed dash line are simulations. You can see uh, all the types of the transfer function here. Here is example of uh, vary varying of the order of the filter as I told you by switching of the capacitors. The switch can be also electronic so as you wish you can change it, you can switch it. And here are the results, the theoretical order 
and the orders from simulations and measurements, they are close to each other. Uh, next slide shows uh, setting the pole frequency uh, by the value of uh, trans conductances and uh, you can see that the range is from 5 kHz to 150 kHz, so relatively large span of uh, pole frequencies. And uh, setting of quality factor is the last uh, graph of measurement and simulation, you can see a higher quality factor up to 1.6. So conclusion, uh, the circuit uh, is uh, multifunction, multifunctional, it offers multiple transfer function, functions in one circuit, provides electronic, electronic control of pole frequency quality factor and uh, the measurement and simulation results confirm the uh, agreement with theory. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Do we have any questions in the room? I got one. I got really curious. It, uh, in Lucas's presentation, the, the simulation results at, towards the high frequencies, towards the 20 megahertz, they were kind of rolling down, right? It looked like you were running out of gain in, in, in some of the transistors or, or whatever. That they were rolling down. But in your measurements now, using the same circuits, I, 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 can, I can understand from, from your talk. Not in that one, but if you go one back, like or two, two back, this one. These first two, graph? No, no, which one? This one and the following one. You we'll see the, the gain is starting to actually, it's actually rising above 20 megahertz. Mm -hmm. Even more in the next, in the next slide. It's How can you explain that? It's uh, the result of measurement, and it uh, usually is caused by uh, real properties of circuit, parasitic capacitances, uh, various uh, inaccuracies in uh, active elements. Uh, it's uh, 10 megahertz, I think, here. Yes, uh, and uh, it's very hard to construct uh, this uh, filter such that it has no uh, non-idealities, yeah. yes, so it's real properties of parasitics. How did you calibrate your, your, your measurement instrument before you conducted the measurement? Uh, it's a network analyzer from Agilent, mm -hmm. uh, it measures the transfer, uh, and uh, it calibrates such that uh, the unity gain is uh, in the whole band exactly zero visible, but uh, this is really uh, increasing of the gain uh, at the board, so the mm -hmm. instrument is correct, it, mm -hmm. it measures up to, I think, 100 megahertz, yeah. so it's no problem in the measurement instrument, but in the circuit itself. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So now we, we move on to, to Turkey, to Ahmed uh, Tumla. Please go ahead. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm, my name is Ahmed Tumla. I come from Erzurum Technical University in Turkey. Now I'm uh, uh, talk about my study title, pra Practical Position taking control of robotic manipulator based on fraction of the sliding mode controller. As we uh, know that robots, one of the most promising technologies, have been used in many industrial areas such as uh, manufacturing assembly, medical operation, drilling operation, and uh, mobile application. However, the main areas of research in field of robotic manipulator can be summarized uh, different type uh, manipulator design uh, trajectory or head planning for robotic system and robot manipulator control uh, for uh, position, acceleration or force control. Among the, these scientific resource areas, control of a robot manipulator has a crucial place to follow a precise and reliable trajectory between initial and final position of the test. Uh, as uh, we clearly know that robotic systems are time varying nonlinear system due to the nonlinear behavior of the system dynamics, mo uh, modeling uncertainties and external disturbance. Uh, using the Lagrangian or uh, Newtonian dynamics, 
end of molecular dynamics can be described as equation uh, one. And this is the equation here. Uh, tau is the control input of manipulator joints. Mm -hmm. M is the mass master of the manipulator uh, system. Uh, H is the Coriolis gravitant fractional force of the matrix. And tau sub index D disturbance effects on the system. And Q is the our angular position of the manipulator joints. And uh, these uh, variables, our state variable in control process. If the both sides of equation y uh, is multiplied by inverse of the mass matrix, second order state variable equation of system can be obtained as shown in equation two. And this equation will be used in proposed uh, control algorithm. The aim of the all control techniques is to control the robot manipulator joint tensions accurately for given trajectory. In order to meet the accurate trajectory tracking demand, the, the tracking error function should be minimized as much as much, uh, uh, possible. In literature, different type of control techniques have been applied to the robotic system, such as gen, uh, classical PID control for the nonlinear control techniques, Hash infinitive or sliding mode control techniques have been applied to different types of uh, robotic systems. In addition to these pure control methods, fractional order calculus techniques has been combined with different types of control technologies uh, to obtain a robust control performance in result years. This is the classical uh, fractional order PID control block diagram. In this paper, modified by the advantage of fractional order calculus and sliding mode control, a fractional order sliding mode control chain is proposed and performed on a real sixth of industrial robotic manipulator. The proposed control technique provides fast infinitive time coherence of system state variable strong robustness and simple structure for implementation without using information of upper bound on uncertainty and disturbance in manipulator systems. Now, uh, let us look at the primarities of fractional order calculus. The Riemann real uh, fractional derivative and integral of alpha order function with respect to time are given equation three and four. Uh, three, uh, equation three, uh, uh, fractional derivative function and four is the integral order function of f. Uh, in addition to this, the nth order derivative of fractional derivative operative can be transformed as shown in equation five, and these properties will be used in our control algorithm. Uh, now let us uh, look at the fractional order sliding mode control design. The proposed fractional order sliding mode control techniques consist of two parts. Uh, and, and it can be defined mathemat mathematically in following equation six. First part, quality is equivalent control law, and it can be obtained using a sliding survey function, as shown in equation uh, seven. And the second one is quality sufficient control law. In uh, sliding survey function, e, e is the tracking error function, and uh, beta is the control gain matrix. In this study, following fractional order sliding uh, survey function is designed by using fractional order uh, calculus, as shown in equation uh, eight. To obtain accurate control law, first of all, second derivation of sliding survey function is obtained by taking derivative type twice of equation eight, as shown in equation nine. Using the second derivation of tracking error function, and the state variable equation of the system, uh, our new uh, second derivation of sliding function can be rewritten as equation 10. In the sliding survey condition, if the sliding survey function, derivation of sliding survey function, and second derivation of sliding survey function are equal to null, then the tracking error reaches to zero. Therefore, the equivalent control law can be obtained as follow. For the second part of the control law, following switch uh, control law is chosen. Thus, the total control law can be obtained as shown in equation. Uh, now, uh, our experiments, the proposed control approach has been uh, verified by performing experimental tests on a sixth of industrial robotic manipulator with end effector tool using the control block diagram as shown in figure. In this study, for the fractional order calculus, Foncom 
production order modeling and control toolbox has been used in, in, with MATLAB streaming software. How is the result? To demonstrate and the performance of very far the effectiveness of the fraction load sliding mode with respect to the classical uh, fract uh, sliding mode control for a given trajectory. A helix trajectory has been defined for the robot manipulator as in uh, as shown in figure. Uh, black is the our reference uh, trajectory. Red is the our response of the fraction load the sliding mode control and uh, blue one is the classical sliding mode control. Using the proposed fraction load the sliding mode control and sliding uh, classical sliding mode control law, tracking performance of molecular joints that provide the desired position of end effector and tracking carries for both controls have been shown in figures. Uh, these uh, figures uh, first response uh, first joint responses uh, As can seen in figure, the classical uh, sliding mode controller are given poor uh, tra uh, tracking performance as compared to the fractional order sliding mode control due to its lack of the fractional action against the uncertainty and disturbance. And this one is second and third response of the uh, joint uh, in robotic manipulator. And this one is the five and six responses of the Uh, uh, our study. As shown in figure, fraction order sliding mode control improved the control performance with quite small tracking error. Moreover, to show the state state control performance of the proposed controller, the RMCE values of joint tracking error noise have been calculated. As in table, uh, as in, in table, RMS, uh, RMCE values of joint tracking error norms obtained using proposed control are less than those of obtained using classical sliding mode control. And finally, in this study, the proposed uh, fraction or the sliding mode control method has been presented and validated on a real sixth of robotic manipulator to show its structural partners and precision to achieve the uh, uh, time coherence and better tracking of trajectory The fraction calculus has been combined with sliding mode control. The, a valid classical sliding control is also performed to the robotic manipulator to show the superiority of proposed controller. The experimental result clearly shows that proposed method has performed effectively in perspective of rapid response, fast definitive time coverance, significant improvements in terms of minimizing trajectory tracking error when it comparated the response of classic sliding mode controller. According to operating uh, average position tracking performance of the all joints, state state error values of classical stemology is greater than about three times that of the our fraction load the sliding mode controller. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we have any uh, questions to offer? I was curious. Did you uh, did you investigate the stability uh, and the difference between the fractional order design and the, the normal sliding mode control? Uh, no, no, only this performance uh, control techniques. So no, no stability. No. Yeah. No. So future work. Yes, future. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. That brings us to our uh, last presentation from uh, Mustafa um, Konal again from Turkey. Yes. Please go ahead. My name is Mustafa Konal from Turkey, and I'm a research assistant in Nam Kemal University, and also I'm a PhD student in Istanbul University. Uh, I'll present you neuron circuit based on negative type second generation current conveyor. Uh, the outline of my presentation uh, will be first introduction and negative type second generation current conveyor, neuron circuit, simulation results, and conclusion. Current mode active components provide linearity, wider bandwidth, and low power dissipation. And current conveyors are a type of current mode active components, find a large application area in circuit designs. 
Since the introduction of the current conveyors uh, about 1970s, a great number of applications such as analog electronics, filters, amplifiers have been designed. Uh, neurons are basic components of neural networks, have complex structures and play a crucial role in the brain such as learning and memory. Each neuron makes connections with thousands of neighbor neurons via synapses and send receive messages using spikes. Many types of spike, such as tonic spike, phasic spike, tonic bursting, phase spike, can be used for communication between neurons. To understand how the brain works is hard to search because mm -hmm. brain consists of billions of neurons and the neurons can communicate with other neighbor neurons, neighbor neurons simultaneously. Designing neuron circuit with minimum number of transistors and power dissipation is important task considering the billions of neurons in the neural system. And uh, in this work, uh, at negative time second generation current conveyor based uh, neural neuron circuit uh, is presented. Uh, it consists of one current conveyor and five MOS transistors and two MOS transistors are used as capacitor in the circuit and also the circuit exhibits fast spiking characteristics when applied input postsynaptic current. Uh, current conveyor, uh, the circuit symbol of the current conveyor is given in figure one and the characteristic equations of current conveyor is given in equation one. Uh, all currents flow into the active element and the CMOS realization of current conveyor is given in figure two. The improved, improved current conveyor is used instead of the simple, simple structure because, the, because due to increasing the linearity and the high output impedance at Z minus, Z minus terminal. And the aspect ratios of current conveyor is given in table but the power, power supply voltages are chosen uh, as one and a half volt and biasing voltage is chosen as 0 0.4 volts. And the schematic of the proposed neuron circuit is given in figure three. Uh, one current conveyor, second generation current conveyor and five MOS transistors are used. And uh, the M1 transistor uh, provides connection between the supply voltage and circuit blocks when its gate voltage become higher than the threshold voltage and the drain and source here drain and source terminals of the M2 and M5 transistors are connected to ground so these capacitors are uh, operated as capacitors and the current of current conveyors charge the M2 and M5 MOS capacitors. So these MOS capacitors activate the M4 and M3 transistors and the charge start to flow through the transistors when their gate voltages become lower than the threshold voltage and the MOS capacitors start to charge again the M2 and M5 MOS capacitors until their gate voltage become equal to threshold voltage. Uh, this is the working principle of the circuit. And aspect ratios for these five MOS transistors is given in table 2 and the supply voltage is chosen as 1 volt. Uh, current equation of node 1 can be calculated as given in equation 2. The postsynaptic input is the sum of these, these, and these currents, and the drain source current of M3, and output current, and this current is equal to drain source current of M1. Also, current equation of node 2 can be calculated as given in 
equation three, substituting the two and three, the in, uh, bit, uh, input and output characteristic can be calculated as given in equation four, and the voltage of spike out is equal to voltage on the most capacitor two. Simulation results. Uh, we applied 100 nanoampere current to the postsynaptic input of the neural circuit, and the spike output of neural circuit is given in figure 5b, 4b. We also analyzed the proposed circuit for different input currents, uh, 100 nanoampere, 50 nanoampere, and 40 nanoampere currents applied to the synaptic input of neural circuit and this is output, spike output for 100 nanoampere and the second figure is the spike output of neural circuit for 50 nanoampere input and this is the spike output of proposed neural circuit for 40 nanoampere input and as seen from the figures, the spike output uh, increasing when the input postsynaptic input current uh, be, become higher, and also the sorry, spike response time is getting less when uh, applied high input input to postsynaptic input to to neuron circuit yes and conclusion to sum up my presentation uh, a current conveyor second generation a negative type current conveyor based null neural neuron circuit is designed and the circuit is capable of generating fast speaking behavior and it consists of only most transistors uh, without any passive elements. Two MOS transistors are used as capacitor, so this circuit is compatible with VLSI systems. Here is my references. And thanks for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mustafa, for presenting. Do we have any questions from the floor? Nope, it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, Mustafa, you're not dealing with a lot of current. You have only 50 nanoamps, 100 nanoamps. That, that's really not a lot to work with. Yes. And then you're putting that into those capacitors, the, the MOS capacitors. Yes. And are you worried about, or did you estimate also what the circuit itself would also provide on capacitance, parasitic capacitance on those nodes? And how is the trade-off? How do, how, how do you imagine the layout uh, to be affecting these, these nodes? I didn't try this circuit with passive capacitors, uh, but uh, when we see the outputs of the circuit, if we apply uh, not nanoampere currents uh, more than this, and this circuit uh, will be uh, will be work good, but uh, I I didn't try the other inputs of no, but did you did you also see how much uh, capacitance for example you would get only by the layout by by uh, all the wires uh, by all the by all the traces that are attached to those critical nodes no i i didn't uh, turn the parasitic effect effects of the circuit no. thank you very much Yeah, um, I'd just like to remind you again about the, the updated schedule. So apparently there's a session cancelled tomorrow. Session number 12 got moved, the four papers remaining, two papers got cancelled, which are remo moved into other sessions. You can see on those slides. And otherwise, I would like to uh, conclude the, the session, the special session on fractional order uh, systems and their utilization. And uh, enjoy the dinner tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you.